Hi, my name is Mark. I'm a concept artist and illustrator working in the entertainment industry. And uh, this demo is going to be uh, about how how to paint uh, a typical sci-fi creature with uh, with uh, rim lighting, backlighting, and like uh, create uh, an overall sci-fi mood. So uh, usually, if I if I have to uh, quickly block in block in a creature, uh, I start I start with just the plain silhouette, even if it's if it's just a portrait, because it's it's much easier for me to to handle the main the main shapes this way and to to block in the light after that. So I blocked in the the silhouette in black and white and and as I imagined uh, a really hard backlight, uh, I'm blocking in the light in the background first. So this way, sort of establishing the the whole uh, uh, the whole lighting scheme. Uh, of the image, and uh, after that, I'm I'm create I created a sub layer, and uh, I also imagined that the creature got uh, the main light from front. So the two the two lighting uh, 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 has the same kind of strength. I um, mean, the back lighting and the lighting from front, the uh, because uh, because uh, of these reflectors are. Uh, are in the back. They they gonna create a much much harder uh, rim light than uh, than the main than the opposed to the light. Uh, what comes from the front? What creates a much more softer light? Um, basically, I'm using the main light to to describe the to describe the shapes inside inside the body. And I'm gonna use the rim lights, the light in the back, to to sort of frame uh, the creature and uh, and carve him out more from the background. So uh, here I'm just I'm just going with the flow. Uh, I I only had a vague idea what I'm gonna do. Um, I imagined like. Um, a weird uh, a humanoid, humanoid but still alien creature, and uh, I'm I'm just uh, going with a happy accident, and uh, what 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 are the result of the of the first round of blocking in the lights and uh, just trying to create an interesting an interesting silhouette for this guy. Uh, as you see, I'm trying to focus more more on the face and and give more interest in the ar around the facial area and uh, and around the, the eyes, nose, mouth triangle. So originally, I had uh, I drawn a mouth for the creature, but I, then I decided to to lose it. And for me, it's it it, it really helps to to zoom out a bit and. Uh, just to just to know how the whole thing works, and I'm um, I'm using the free transform tool to 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 quickly shape shape uh, the direction of, of 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 the body and the face, and just to just to the, just to twist different body parts. It's it's a really easy easy way to do that, especially in this in this early stage, where you don't really have to be precious about about the different details. So I'm just I'm just experimenting with with various various stuff. Still want to bring back some sort of mouth part, but then I decided it's it's sort of corrupted and uh, but it and the creature uses different mechanical implants to breathe. And now um it's it's time to. To introduce the the rim light, the rim light is really useful if uh, if you if your creature is uh, in front of uh, a black background, or or there isn't much light source around, uh, because then you can you can simply bring back more more visual information. 
and frame frame your character or or uh, or monster or vehicle more and but you have to be you have to be careful with the rim light because i i think it's it's getting a bit overused in general uh, in concept art uh what i understand i mean it's it, it could add to to an extra level to to the character design or creature design but but it's um uh, but sometimes i i also see that people people use it uh without any uh, backlighting or without any appropriate light source and so what you have to be careful about is uh is to use it when uh, when it's needed. So when when there's a light source in the back, so so use it when when it's appropriate. So I really like to after after fini get to getting to uh, a rough sketch day, stage, I like to jump to the liquify tool and just just to correct the the anatomical faults. <laughs> what I usually what I usually uh, do when I'm just uh, quickly sketch. And then from, from here I'm just I'm just painting painting on top, try to create a bit more softer edges uh, inside uh, inside the creature, but also uh, create much harder edges around the focal area, what is what is the center of the face, uh, just to add more creases and um, more more definition to to the creature creatures head basically, and also strengthening. Uh, I'm correcting the rim light to to make it work and blending it with with my with my much softer main light. And as you see, and I also mentioned this in my other videos, that I don't, I don't like to zoom in because uh, it just helps me focus on the on the overall design and, and the overall shape, the brushwork, and like the general anatomy of the creature. I like flipping my, my canvas to, to check details. I add some extra level of extra layer of pipes, what what's coming out from, from the creature's back. Blurring them out to, to bring them out of focus. And yeah, I'm I'm going back to the background now. When I when I felt that the creature got to, to a certain level, just to add more details and a bit more visual noise, just to just just to suggest that there's stuff and and the real environment in the background. Although I'm blurring it out again. And I'm gradually flattening down the guy to one layer. And now getting back to the ring light. Uh, and I start to create uh, harder edges uh, using selections. The mark tool and, and the lasso tool are really handy if, if you want to create hard hard edges. Any more details to the mechanical parts, any more lights to, to the surfaces what are sort of facing towards the light sources. Just small, small bits and pieces here and there around the edges 
And now as I'm, uh, as I'm moving to more smaller detail, I, I zoom, I zoom in a bit. Usually that's, this is what I do. So I try to solve everything at a really zoomed out stage. And then when I, when I can't really solve uh, more problems and at that stage, I, I zoom in further and paint on that level and then zoom in further slowly. Uh, it's a really rare thing that I that I start my paintings in black and white because I uh, I like to play with the colors straight from the beginning. But um, for for this demo, I felt because it's it's about lighting a, key, a creature that uh, it's appropriate to to start in black and white, and then I can just focus purely on the on the lighting. And after that, it's. If you sort out your your values and you have a solid value structure in black and white, then uh, color coloring your, your artwork up shouldn't be a problem. More details and refining the silhouette. Yeah, it looks sort of alright. I still feel that the anatomy is a bit wonky. Even even if it's if it's an imagined creature, it should it should work inside its its own world. And now I'm I'm starting to like color it up. Um, I'm just dropping uh, some overlay layers with with a mid blue color on top, just because uh, I don't want to change. Uh, change the value structure of the image too much. I I. I Try to keep the color around the fifty percent on the on the overlay layer, and this way um, it doesn't change the values. So, and then I erased it back and um, and adding adding uh, more overlays, more colors to the creature, just just to have some sort of a a, a pattern uh, to their skin. And uh, I'm using uh, I'm using uh, a complementary color. Uh, a yellow orange thing as opposed to the blue background to to pop the creature a bit more and now I'm I'm jumping back and forth between between the background and and the creature itself uh, because I really want to unify the whole image so for the lights I usually use uh, screen uh, screen or color those layers but uh, you really have to be careful if you use those because it's it's really easy to to room your values and the colors uh, below them. Uh, I like to use color ditch layers instead of the color ditch tool because I I just feel I can I, I have I have much much control over over it and, and I always I can always erase it back. It's really far hard for me to follow how the actual color ditch tool works and try to try try to keep uh, all these sort of lighting adjustments on, on separate layers. And then I'm flattening down again when, when I sort of happy with uh, with the stage and and I as always I'm going back to like finesse the, the silhouette a bit more and I just I just paint on a normal layer and, and, and try to try to refine the details more. So going back to painting with with really simple round brushes. I don't want to lose the paint over feel of the whole of the whole image, so I decided not to use any any photo textures or anything. Probably this this would be the stage where where, where I would start uh, uh, dropping in uh, photo textures to to richen up the image and to and to give it. Uh, give it more realism. Is there any more visual noise? That's pretty much it. Little bumps, little hairs. 
uh, creases, folds in the skin. And I decided to, to, to punch the, my main light source a bit more just to differentiate the creature more from the background and, and to also create uh, create more depth in the image. So this way uh, uh, I'm, I'm having uh, an overall uh, desaturated and cold light in the background and having a more saturated but, mu but much softer light coming from the foreground. And that that already gives uh, an extra sense of depth. Adding some smoke, some aerial effects, lightening up the creature a bit more. Unfortunately, I, I, I have the habit to, to darken, darken down too much a bit, and this way I, I really easily lose uh, a lot of information. Of course, it depends on on your monitor as well, but yeah, doing some some liquefying corrections again. And at the end, I I, I like to I liked I I felt that the silhouette of the guy isn't really that interesting, so I decided to just cut out parts from from the or or from the painting already almost finished and. Just, just use those uh, to to extend, to extend uh, the silhouette a bit more and to add more details to, to the creature's face. I, I like to I like to play around with with this kind of stuff because it can it can really add uh, details un unexpected details and. Without putting, without putting too much work into the, into those areas. Strengthening the the lights, the rim lights a bit more, and matching matching uh, their colors to to the light sources because I colored the light sources. And jumping back to the background and like fading them out a bit as well. And now this is like the final adjustment stage where I flatten down the whole image together with the background. I'm not gonna touch the, the creature again separately, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm doing some uh, some color balance to to unify unify the image and uh, push the tones, push the push the uh, the shadows and the lights a bit more, adding some some fake lens flares. Uh, I'm using, I'm using a colorless layer for that. Just just some facts to make the to make a proper <laughs> sci-fi alien vibe. Smoke is always good. Smoke and mist is always handy. Yeah, and I and I missed some some sort of lighting or something something from the eyes. So I just quickly started to started to sketch in something, but I felt it's it's it sort of works. So so I kept it in, but I really pushed it back, so it's really barely seen. And added some lights to to the mechanical parts, the, the mechanical implants, just to just to show them show them more because. Uh, they sort of lost in 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 the creature's head. So refining the what should I call it pupil a bit more, trying out different colors quickly, and deciding to go with an orange just to differentiate it from from the color of the lights. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice just adjusting the the pupil a bit more to make the the creature look exactly to the viewer. Yeah, I decided to go with a more narrow one just to 
So you see, it's it's barely seen, but it's but it's there. So, and because we instantly go for the eyes. Adding some extra blur and erasing erasing back that layer to add uh, some fake lens depth. Dropping some unsharp mask to the to the whole whole image to bring out a bit more details from from the painted face. I actually use that to to add a bit more specularity around around the, the face area. So already sharpened the whole thing. So this way, I only preserved the highlights, and then I dropped it back on, on the normal layer and just kept it on the face, but in, on, at a really low opacity. Darken darken the whole image down, and just bringing back the the lights and and the creatures had itself. To, to make it pop just a tiny bit more. And that's pretty much the final stage, was checking the image. And I'm pretty happy with it, so some last touches for the lights. And it's done. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned something.